Hello everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Popper Ponderings. My name is Austin, and as always, I am brought to you by the Manabase, www.themanabase.com. Make sure to check us out online, as well as our YouTube channel. And if you like this video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe to my channel. It would mean the world to me. I do, do appreciate it. And comment on this video. And tell me how bad I am, because I also love that. Uh, I also like to let you guys know that I just started my very own Patreon. So if you uh, do enjoy my content and you want to, you know, huck me a couple bucks, you know, you know, everyone could use a couple extra bucks, I guess. <laughs> that sounds really bad, but uh, the link will be in the description in the video, and uh, there's some s pretty sweet tiers there. So again, yeah, www.themanabase.com, and if you want to check out my Patreon, this week we are playing. Snow Zoo, um, and obviously I forget the person who gave me this list, but um, this is a very very powerful deck, and uh, I would see a lot of a lot of similarities to the Greedy Jun deck that we played. Oh, it seems like forever ago, where we have a, a mana base that is going to be quite difficult to turn on, but when it does, we're doing a lot of things that are more powerful. Then a good amount of the decks in Popper. So we are playing two Wild Nacodles and four Curd Apes. These are, I guess, our main attackers along with these three Horn Kavus. And the main point of these creatures is they're going to be bigger than their mana cost allows at the disadvantage of having to play a bunch of basics. So kind of what happens here is we're probably going to need a bunch of red, a bunch of green, and a little bit of white. So the Wild Nacodles are usually only going to be two twos. That's why there's only two of them compared to the four Curd Apes. The Horn Kevas are good because, again, it's going to max out our Burning Tremor series. And this is a deck that I chose because it showcases one of the new cards from Modern Masters 3 as well as I think a deck can. This is a very, very potent deck that's going to have a lot of draws where you go, you know, Burning Tremor series into Burning Tremor series into... Horn Kavu or Burning Tremissary to Burning Tremissary into, you know, Wild Nacodle Curd Ape. Those are a very, very difficult starts for your opponent to beat. It also has Core Skyfisher, just a very efficient flyer. So this is kind of the main attacking package in the deck, these 16 guys. We move along over to kind of our, I guess, grindier cards. We have two Pulse of Morasses for the late game against any sort of burn deck. They're going to be very, very good. We have four Thraben Inspectors because this card is just so, so good at giving us cards into the late game. And being a 1-2 is definitely not out of the question. It attacks through a lot of stuff, especially a lot of the stuff in the Delver deck. We have our, uh, of our mana fixing. We have four Abundant Growth, four Prophetic Prism. These kind of combo with the core Skyfisher as they not only fix our terrible mana but they're also going to be able to be bounced with the core skyfisher to draw us more cards so they kind of go into this pile as well as just being mana fixers then we go into our removals we our removals that was weird why did i say removals removal we have two journey to nowhere just the most efficient white removal spell in the format going to be able to kill basically anything for lightning bolt because this is a red aggro deck and then we're playing four scred so this is a very, very powerful card. For one red, it deals damage to target creature equal to the number of snow permanents you control. And as you can see, our entire deck, the only mana producing lands in the deck are snow covered basics. So we're using Ash Barons and Evolving Wilds to fetch our snow covered basics that will help power out, hopefully, one red Doom Blades. And that's kind of the draw to playing, I guess, this kind of a shell, is we get to play a lot of really big, under-costed creatures, and some removal spells that are usually going to be under-costed at the cost of playing a very sketchy mana base. And there are times where we're going to curve out fairly well. The, it helps that Curd Ape and Wild Nacodle are bigger than their mana costs suggest. So, you know, going turn one... Evolving Wilds into turn 2, fetch Ash Barons, get Forest, play Wild Nacodle as a 2-2. Really doesn't feel that bad. The same goes for Curdy. I am excited for this deck. I think it is powerful. I've played a couple of uh, practice games and it's felt very good in both. So I'm excited to get her going here for uh, for these games. If you go over to the sideboard here, we have three Pyroblasts, as per usual in a red deck. We have the third Journey to Nowhere. If we play against, again, any sort of Gurmag Angler deck, we're going to want to bring that in. Three Electricaries, because we never leave home with a red deck without one in this format. Two Ancient Grudge for the Affinity deck that we never play against. We have Quasali Pride Mage. This kind of, I guess, peters into the high power 
kind of hard to cast cards. You don't see this card a lot in Popper, even though people forget that it is a common because it is so powerful. 2-2 two, two, Exalted for 2, and then you can uh, you can sacrifice a destroyed artifact or an enchantment. We're already leaning hard on our mana, so why not lean a little harder <laughs> with the Kosali Pride Mage? This card is very, very powerful, though, and it will allow us to up our race ability against Affinity while also being able to keep them off balance. We have two Relic of Progenitus, just a good card in general. I love to have Graveyard Hate. And the piece, the resistance of the deck, I wanted to play two Stone Rains for the Tron matchup. And I was going through some bots because I randomly didn't, didn't own any Stone Rains. We'll check out these bad boys. That's 7th edition Stone Rain. That is some terrible, terrible art. And I'm going to give this an ugly in the conclusion or post-game wrap-up. But this card is sick. Look at that art. Whew. That's going to destroy that little village. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I'll be back here for round number one in just a little bit. Again, remember, if you like this video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. As well as check out my Patreon. The link is in the, in the description. And I will see you guys back here for round number one of Popper Ponderings. Brought to you by the Mana Base. www.themanabase.com. I'll see you in a little bit.